This is Robert Demers for Conman here at Kamikaze, yep. and I'm here with voice actor Dino Andrade, who you might recognize from some of the characters right there behind him. Yes, I am that guy and that guy and these that guys. Guy and that I'm guy. occasionally that guy, but they don't pay me to be that guy. Yes. Uh, I was the Scarecrow in Batman Arkham Asylum. You're in my Arkham now, Batman. <laughs> I, uh, I tinkerer Mecha Torque from World of Warcraft. Uh, Operation Nomicon begins now! Mimiron, don't push that button! And of course, Professor Putricide. Two oozes, one room. So many delightful possibilities. Good news, everyone! Yeah, I'm all those guys, and I've been in Call of Duty and Brutal Legend and even Pop from the Rice Krispies. Doesn't that hurt your head? Pop, Scarecrow, same guy. One of uh, these things just doesn't belong here. One of these things just doesn't belong here. And also, I am the creator and founder of SoulGeek.com, which is basically Match.com for us. It is a geek dating website specifically. If you're into sci-fi, horror, fantasy, animation, anime, manga, conventions, cosplay, uh, collectibles, fan art, fan fiction, film scores, you name it. If you're into great works of imagination, this is a place to find someone else to revel in it with you, to find your soul geek. And we, it works. We just had our 20th Soul Geek wedding today, which was really, really cool. So very, very proud of that. And that's fantastic. Congratulations you. to you and them. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. That would be Soul Geek members, Random Scraps, and Spectrum got married today, which is, is great. Um, and I come by it honestly. I do. I'm a huge, huge geek myself. I was kind of like... Um, actor Tim Russ who played Tuvok in uh, Star Trek Voyager who says that he's basically just a, a geek who made it that's me I would be here anyway even if I wasn't signing I, I have been a lifelong fan of sci-fi horror fantasy uh, when when I uh, when I got into this work it wasn't like okay well as an actor I'll do voice work and until I get to Broadway it's like no this is what I wanted to do so for me this is living the dream I I'm a geek just like you now, how has the convention been treating you? A lot of people coming by? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this convention is great. It's a, it's a Kamikaze's been really good to me. Kamikaze's been really good to me. Great crowd. It's nice that it's local, which is terrific. Um, yeah, no, it's a great, great atmosphere, great vibe. I love it here. Now, uh, what was it that made you want to get into voice acting? Well, the first thing that really attracted my attention, really got my attention, was when I saw Pinocchio as a kid. That movie just scared the pants off of me. There was something about, particularly when Lampwick got turned into a donkey in his hands, they showed the shadow of just his hands morphing into the hooves, you know, and Monstro and all of that just really scared the heck out of me. And I began to wonder, how did a piece of animation scare me? And I, it, it was before I realized that you know, live action film is really, you know, life captured at 24 frames a second, where animation is life created at 24 frames a second. This, this is magic. And as I began to look into that, I began to study the work of, of voice actors who are the, 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 the creators of the soul behind the lives created by the animators and really got to know the work of people like Mel Blanc and my, my personal hero, Paul Fries and June Foray and, you know, all of these folks that were just, you know, legends. And I just said, hey, I, 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 I want to be that. I want to be that. That's, I want to work in great works of imagination. And this was a way for me to do it. Well, how do you develop your voices when you create something or you, you audition for something? How do you develop the voices for, to fit that role? You know, it all depends on the character. It really does. Um, the inspiration can come from different places. Like when I did Professor Putricide, Putricide, it said in the copy they were looking for an evil version of Professor Farnsworth from Futurama. So I had to work on that voice. Good news, everyone, trying to sound really evil while being, you know, Professor Farnsworth. Um, on the other hand, when I did Mimiron, uh, Mimiron, I was just looking for an inspiration and I happened upon the, uh, Daffy Duck. You're despicable, that kind of thing. I took the lisp out of it and I added a lot of gravel and all of a sudden I had Mimiron. You know, but it's Daffy Duck with a lot of gravel and no lisp. Um, when I did High Tinker or Mechatork, I just did a higher pitched voice uh, and they told me I had to do these speeches 
uh, and they described the, the setting, and I just fixed in my mind the conclusion of Conquest of the Planet of the Apes with Caesar standing on the parapets and the humans on their knees and the city burning in the background delivering that speech, and that's what I thought of when I did it, you know. Inspiration comes from everywhere and anywhere. It depends on the gig. You have a lot of uh, voice acting roles in video games. You find I know it, it takes a long hours uh, to put in more uh, uh, lines for a video game compared to a t TV series or the like. Uh, does it is it long hours to, to, and hard on your voice for the uh, voicing a video game? Well, in terms of the hours, the hours actually aren't that different because we generally work in four-hour sessions just to make it safe for the actor's voice, the actor's work. And we generally stay within four-hour sessions, whether it's a video game or a TV show or a movie, four-hour blocks is pretty much standard. That being said, video games do tend to be more strenuous because they're much more action-based. And when you do particularly the war games like Call of Duty, I couldn't speak after recording that because it was hours of screaming things like Krauts in the window, get on the 50 cal, medic, at the top of my lungs at full acting emotion, you know. Uh, so, so yeah, that kind of thing becomes very, very strenuous. And you don't do a lot of that on a TV show or a movie. You know, so, yeah, that's how that works. And a lot of people, a lot of voice actors put in uh, long hours in some things that they're not necessarily have a front row uh, character, as in uh, it's called additional voices. Do you have a lot of that? Is it, is it more rewarding to have a character like Scarecrow from Arkham Asylum, for example, than having all these background voices? Well, you know, that's kind of the beauty of the video game world. The beauty of the video game world is that I can get a role like the Scarecrow Whereas in a feature film, you know, if they were doing a major animated feature of Arkham Asylum, that would probably be Ray Fiennes or something. It wouldn't be me. And that's the joy of video games is I can get much larger, meatier, juicier roles that go to the name actors who are getting all the stuff on the, and the TV shows and particularly features. So, so yeah, it is, it's very, very satisfying, particularly in that realm where I've got the juicier roles. Well, with that said, do you find that voice actors should get more uh, more roles when it comes to these big budget films when you bring on uh, big name actors who don't have much voice acting uh, experience when, when they are, they're well on screen, but it's, voice acting is a completely different monster. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's, it's a question of balance, and sadly the balance isn't there anymore. It used to be that there used to be a balance between uh, voice actors and, and, and big star actors going back forever. I mean, uh, Gay Paria was an animated production made in the 1960s. You had Robert Goulet, Red Buttons, Judy Garland, but the villain was Paul Fries, who's a, a completely skilled voice actor. Most of the Pixar films still keep that tradition of casting half names and half, you know, voice actors and keeping that balance. But I think since kind of the one-two punch of Lion King and then Shrek kind of changed everything, because Lion King made so much money that then the producers at DreamWorks said, well, if we want to make that kind of money, let's load in the stars. And suddenly films like... Uh, you know, like Shrek and, and like, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Prince of Egypt came out, where every role was a name. Every role, even the tiniest roles. I mean, the smallest roles in Prince of Egypt were, I, I think, played by uh, Martin Short and Steve Martin. And that just completely changed the balance. It became this mentality of, well, we all want our movies to make, you know, a billion dollars, so pack in stars for everyone. Thankfully, Pixar doesn't do that. To this day, Pixar still has a balance between names and non-names. Uh, you know, skilled voice actors to round out the rest of the cast. I hope that continues. But right now, hey, you know, you're talking bean counters who are, are basically spending their time hedging bets rather than creating great art. Now with your dating website, mm -hmm. now this type of thing, what, what kind of... Um, behind the scenes work goes into matching these uh, these people 
Well, for one thing, the site was created by a geek, me. So I needed to make sure that it, this was actually geek-centric. We don't ask any of the questions that you find on uh, all the other websites, you know, like how much do you make on a scale of one to 10, how hot are you? You know, any of this kind of baloney. We don't care about any of that. We want to know whether or not you know the difference between a phaser and a lightsaber. How, about how many you know? co how many cosplays you made this year? Yes, exactly. And there is a cosplay category in there that you could talk about. Well, who you'd like to cosplay as, who your favorite cosplayers are. All of that because we are actually into the real interest. Because in order to make a relationship work, you need to have shared interests. You need to have shared values. Okay, shared values you can find out when you meet. Shared interests, that's what we're all about. That's why we're here. This is Kamikaze. This is why we are here, right? We love great works of imagination. This is our art form. This is what makes our blood go. So our site is focused entirely on that. And we couldn't get that focus right unless we actually were geeks. Because if there's one thing geeks can spot, it's a poser. So. Well, well, finally, we have this little tradition here on uh, Con, man. Mm -hmm. uh, when we have a chance to talk with a voice actor like yourself, we like to give a little voice actor challenge if you're up to it. A voice actor challenge. Okay, all right. Okay. Well, here, improv a conversation between two of your characters. Here's the situation. Uh, Scarecrow from Arkham Asylum mm -hmm. is facing off not against Batman, but Pop from Rice Krispies. <laughs> Hello, Pop. How are you? Have you tried a little fear toxin on your cereal? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, don't even think about it because I've got corporate backing. <laughs> Snap, crackle, all of us. <laughs> that was great. Thank you so very much for talking to us and enjoy the rest of the convention. You betcha. Thank you so much.